Hello and welcome Rustations or soon to be Rustations. Today I will have a more advanced topic for you. It's about higher order functions or to be a bit more precise functions taking functions as parameters. Therefore it kind of makes sense that you have a general knowledge about ownership and borrowing. Um, otherwise have a short look at the link above or in the comments below. Um, also a bulletproof knowledge of struct, impl and traits and generics is really required. Therefore, I re recommend you the Rust book. I have created some code before as a small use case in which we will have an invoice containing positions, which themselves resemble in an article name, amount and price. This will be used to apply some functions on and later on enhance it with a higher order function. Here, for example, we iterate over a list of invoices, which is randomly generated and we will create a variable containing a sum which is initially zero and then we iterate again over all positions and sum up the price so we have in the end the sum of each invoice. This is basically an approach used commonly in Java and other languages but we can make it more concise and more precise. Here we use an iterator and the for each method which is themselves a higher order function as it takes a lambda in this case that you can see in the two pipes. And we will do basically the same thing, create an iterator of the positions and we fold now. I have a video on that, you can see it above. Uh, we initialize it with zero and then we do the same thing. We take the previous element and the actual element and now we just multiply the amount and the price and voila, in the end we get the sum again and print it out. It's not so much of lesser lines of code, but it's more concise to read. And if you get accustomed to it, it's really easy to oversee the non-relevant lines of code in that case. So like dot eta, but uh, the folding is very precise and this is where the magic basically happens and it's not cluttered all, all around. And we have no mutation in there because we have no mutable variables, which makes your code more safe, which is basically a uh, the core aim of Rust. Let's execute the code real quick just to show you that it basically works. And you see the two sums. The first one is the one you saw before, like with the for loop, and the other one is the folding. Now I have enhanced the invoice implementation and added a function map, which basically does nothing else than wrapping the whole mapping of the positions into the map function. So I just took that basically to leave it as easy as, pos as possible. As you can see, we define the function in that case called map. And then in the pointy brackets, we have like a lifetime. Let's ignore that at that point. And then we have a second type parameter, which is defined as being a function taking an invoice position and re giving back a type R, which we define in the next step. And as you can see, as it's a function, it takes a method actually, it takes the self uh, uh, parameter and then the function itself defined as f and returning a vector of r. And now we just apply the function on the positions. We t take the iterator of uh, positions and trigger the map functions that we supply with the func. Then we can collect it and put it back into a vector r. There is another way to make it work uh, or define the type parameter. It's basically just some, I would call it syntactic sugar or enhancement, but it's nothing fancy. It does nothing else than to put the definition of F, the boundaries basically into another statement. So if you have like multiple functions or more complex boundaries to set for the type parameters in the pointy brackets, you can just put it each beneath each other in the where clause after the function signature itself. This actually is part of the function signature. But in my opinion, opinion, it's way more readable as the line doesn't get super long. And you will need it if you are making more complex functions or building them yourself. I mean, that function in there makes really no sense at all. Only if you have like a deep nested object, it may make sense. But this is a really easy use case. So I stick to that. Now let's simply use the map. In this case, I just uh, added a print function to the invoice and it just uses the map of the positions and simply prints out the 
information supplied and also the multiplication we had before like in the folding but only for each position and i added also a function sum we saw that before basically it's the folding and just uh, giving back the sum of the whole invoice so it kind of makes no sense because in that case you wouldn't use a map you would use a for each as we don't give anything back so we have actually a vector with a unit type now to execute i just called it in the on the main function therefore i again have my uh, list of invoices turn them into an iterator and now i use the for each and just trigger the print function so if i now execute cargo cargo run you will see it will print out the invoice in a console-like manner the recipient is zero i just generated numbers from with the random functions and as you can see i didn't format it quite well here we have each position uh, created in the map actually and then below here we have the result of our sum function so that's it for the video today and i hope you enjoyed it and had something to learn thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video